Ah, there you are. <clears throat> Husband. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat-like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeb refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? You presume right. Nope, trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. You take care, though. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. Hey, I know you. Losa, the dark-eyed jokester you met aboard the ship, waves enthusiastically and dips into a mock elegant curtsy. Back then I was <coughs> Madame Josephine Gribbles de Pube, and you were you. <laughs> Glad to see you made it. Nothing like a nice tentacle slap across the moor to set the tone for the week, eh? How'd you escape? Me too. Did you hear something? When you were in the water, I mean. I heard the same thing. Do you know what this means? It means I'm not the only. Losa's voice catches in her throat. The joy drains from her face. Her eyes lose focus and her whole body goes rigid. She is stock still, waxy skinned, her eyes dark. Greyish black veins run from her eyes down her cheeks. Her head snaps to you mechanically, and her eyes lock with yours, dark pupils dilated into great black voids. Light suddenly flashes back into her face. The grey veins drain to pinkish flesh, and her whole body relaxes. Anyway, what were we talking about? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. It was a shipwreck, all right. Not much more to say about it, I guess. Papa Joris used to tell me, Lo, sir. He'd say, Lo, sir, you ever find yourself in a sinking ship? Follow the rats. They'll find you a way out. Applies to a lot of situations, actually. Vermin tend to know what's what. Ah, oh, it's nothing, really. It's just, I'm just a bit, well, a bit hospitable. Ha, <laughs> what I mean is, look, you've never been a, a host, right? That's because you're like a clump of leaves on the side of the road. That ain't bad, though. I'd give just about anything to be like you. But I'm a... a roadside inn. Red door, flowers out front, friendly lady at the door beckoning you in for half price. Like a god's damn gold star inn for the disembodied. Now isn't that just the question of the hour? I can't be sure just yet. I'll be surprised if it's a demon. Definitely not a sprite, either. Maybe a spectre, but I wouldn't bet money on it. So, how are you enjoying the joy? Yeah, same story here. Reckon in my case, they might actually be right, though. So, you want to check this place out together? Strength in numbers and all that. It does, right? Before we head out, I've got more than a few tricks up my sleeve, so you'll have to pick which one I'll pull out if, <laughs> when, push comes to shove. Lately, I've been into the enchanting arts, but I can shoot, slash, summon, steal, whatever your little black heart desires. So, what'll it be? Sounds fine. So, we're good to go? Yeah? Well, that was easier than I thought, and I'll do my best to stay myself. Lead the way. Hey. Hi. Ooh, so serious. What's up? Well, I was giving this concert up on Overlook Hill. There was a great crowd. They were really feeling it. But I guess it was too good. 
I had me a little sauce flare-up. Everyone went a bit, I don't know, wild, rabid. I snapped out of it before anyone got hurt, but the Magisters caught me backstage afterwards. At least I went down doing what I loved. Of course I do. What's your poison? A man after my own heart. I've got one in the works right now, actually. Been writing it on a hand harp, but I could try it unaccompanied. Losa sways to the left and claps twice, as though clearing the air. Her eyes flutter shut, lips set in a serene smile, and she starts moving to an inaudible rhythm. A faint hum moves with the rhythm low and clear. It sounds like a river, like a whistle, like nothing else. Mm, you and you and... <coughs> oh. <coughs> Sorry, I'm rusty, I guess. <sighs> From the top? You and me, we need... <coughs> <coughs> oh. I... I can't. It's nothing. It's nothing. Let's keep moving. The sooner I find a way to get this bloody thing out of my head, the better. How very sweet of you to notice. I know, it's weird. One of the many side effects of the visitor upstairs. She drums on her forehead with two fingers, smiles grimly, and shrugs. They used to be blue. Oh well. She bats her eyelashes at you in an exaggerated flutter, then bursts out laughing and punches your arm. Ha <laughs> ha Character. I like that. I'm gonna use that. If I can say nothing else for my current companion, at least I can say it gave me a bit of character. So what's it like? being alone in your head. <laughs> Guess we can enjoy the quiet when we're dead. Nope, this one doesn't talk to me. It talks through me. You'll know it when you see it. Easy. I'd say we get out of this place. Don't know how long they plan to keep us here, but I'd rather not find out. As you approach the young elf, Losa suddenly grabs your arm. Her hand is damp. Her face looks pale and grey. Hey, listen, I, I don't know why, but, but I think I need to talk to this elf. You mind? She jerks her hand away. I don't... I can't. I, I just need to talk to her, okay? She turns towards Sahela. She darts over to the elf without responding. They begin talking in earnest, more quietly than you can overhear. Losa suddenly snatches up both the elf's hands and leans close to her. Her voice rises. You have to tell me. The whites of Losa's eyes fade to grey, then black. The colour runs into her veins, crisscrossing her skin like lightning. She keeps hold of Sahela's hands. It rises in you even now, Losa. Do not let it. You must be strong. Be strong. You are okay. You are yours. No one else's. I... I... I can't... I... I can't... Losa is fighting an enemy. She will win. She must win. Oh, shut up. Let go! Let go! Let go! I don't want to hurt her. Don't make me. Losa is rigid as a board, tense with the effort of holding Sahela's hands in tight, painful bunches. Leave me alone! Leave me! I don't want to! You are hurting me! Losa's eyes are black. Sahila's fingers are white under her grasp. Let me go! Please! A sinister smile spreads across Losa's lips. She jerks the elf toward her. Chatty, chatty elf. Chatty elf with all the answers. I wonder what your blood tastes like. Losa, please! You, you must not defend her. She wakes if she is weakened. We must hurt her to protect her, you see? I bet the elf blood tastes like honey, like nectar, like joy itself. Let's find out. What? Don't look at me like that.
That thing has nothing to do with me. It's just a visitor. A fly that won't buzz off. Glad it didn't freak you out too much, though. I know this kind of stuff can be weird if you aren't used to it. <laughs> Look at us. A merry band of freaks are we. Let's keep moving. I want to get out of this bloody place as soon as possible. I'm fine. You're fine. We're fine. I just want to get out of here. Get that girl and her head sucker out of here. I, uh, guess he's talking about you? Let's just see about that. Hey, loudmouth, what gives? I'm trying to relax here, aren't I? Whatever's going on with you and your passenger, I don't really need it in my vicinity. You can... you can see it. S see Nay. Sense? Good gods, yes. You're a mystic too. Mystic? Ha! <laughs> Used to be a sort of demonologist, though. Was learning the arts, at least. Never did have much of a knack for it, to be honest. Studied under a real maestro, though. Learned this and that, too. Doubt it. Exorcism's a tier three skill. I was only halfway through tier one when I got thrown in here. Come on, make yourself useful. There's got to be something you can do. Well, I might be able to tell you exactly what's inside you. It might be any number of things. A ghost, a floater, a lucid dreamer who took a wrong turn somewheres. Let me try something. He places a thumb on each of Losa's temples and one foot gently on hers. Now, let's see. Wow! Holy, holy, holy! You ought to thank your lucky stars. That thing hasn't turned you into a meat puppet by now. Crick on a cracker! You need help. Serious help. Ah. <sighs> Don't I know it? Do me a favour. Get out of here and hie ye to the north of Driftwood. My old master was hot on the heels of something there, and if anyone can help you, he can. Driftwood, old master, hot hills. Got it. I don't dare say it now. Not while our guest is listening. Don't you worry. With something like that inside you, Loser, he'll either come to you, or you'll be drawn to him soon enough. I'd say we should stop to talk, but I'm swamped. <laughs> Don't make much of it one way or the other, but the farther we get away from the joy, the better. There's got to be a way off this island. Sure thing, Chief. What's up? You know, wherever the next road leads, I guess. I never was one to sit in one place too long. How about you? You missing home by now? I get you. So, what is it you miss exactly? Well, for what it's worth, I think you're still pretty ace. <laughs> Oops, I think I broke him. She pokes you in the ribs. You okay, Chief? Did the big mean tart insult your sensibilities? Psst, ladies these days, on my word, they've no manners at all. None at all. Sure thing, Chief. What's up? She bats her eyelashes coquettishly over black eyes in grey sockets. Just for you, Chief. Okay. I don't. Look, just... I know it was bad, okay? I know. You don't have to tell me. I'm sorry. I just... I just want to move on. Hey, don't I know you from somewhere? So, we've got quite the task on our hands, haven't we? I have to admit, the whole thing is very intriguing. The old band back together again, hmm? I guess that depends, doesn't it? Look at me. Hard. What do you see? Losa leans back slightly, thin arms crossed in front of her chest, and stares at you defiantly from dark eye sockets, darker and deeper set than when you first met. She blows back a lock of white hair, matted with sweat and grime, and holds back a smile from the corners of her lips. Exactly. Exactly. Your god wants me dead. My god? Devil? <laughs> Who knows? It wants me. It's getting stronger and I need to outpace it. I want to make sure you understand, well, the risks. 
I can hear its thoughts. It isn't out for blood. It's out for pain. Domination. Total domination. I was wrong to think I could hold it off. I might hurt you. I might hurt anyone. Could you stop me? Really stop me if it came to that? Promise? Well, all right then. She pinches your cheek, a sparkle in her dim grey eyes. I knew I could count on you to murder me in a pinch. Let's go, Chief. Pretty nice ship, eh? Captain Losa. Has a ring to it, doesn't it? I had a little chit-chat with Malady earlier. She told me I need to find someone to, uh, <clears throat> exercise the thing in my noggin. Apparently, I'll be able to find him near Driftwood, where we're heading. Exciting! Depends which one. Most of them seem a little too earnest for my taste. But Malady? She's my kind of girl. In any case, it looks like they're probably going to help me find out whatever's leeching off my magnificent brain. So I'm not too pressed about being in the same boat. Ha, huh, the same boat. Sure thing, Chief. What's up? One of the gods. Really? Well, look at you go. What did they say? No one, ever one of the gods said that. Losa huffs on her fingernails and buffs them on her tunic, smirking. Nice. Her face cracks into a mischievous smile. She capers around you, bouncing from one foot to the next, chanting. You like me, you like me, you really, really like me. She stops suddenly, goes rigid, then relaxes, smiles broadly, and leans over to whisper in your ear. Psst. I like you too. Oh, hey. I need to get stronger. This is more serious than I thought. Look, I like you, but don't get in my way. Hell if I know. They talk to you, not me. How bad is it? Say, on a scale of 1 to 10. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Hey, before we dash off into the wild world yonder, I should mention, Malady and I had a talk on the way here. Oh, you know, this and that. And she mentioned that the thing in my head is probably a demon. Told me there's a fella not so far from where we're headed who might be able to help me with it too. I know, it's great, exciting, terrifying. A heady mixture of all three that makes my stomach feel like it's in a vice. I have to say, having you here makes it all seem possible. We'll be all right, right, Chief? She smiles, her dark eyes glittering. Well, we better get a move on. I've got a demonologist to find. In the near distance, you see a man, though shadows obscure his features. A faint, guttural chittering emanates from two cages before him. This, this is him. He can help me. He can... Ugh. Losa's eyes suddenly fill with inky blackness. Grey veins appear beneath her skin. Walk away. She shakes her head. Her colour returns to normal. I'm running out of time. I think that man is Jahan, the demonologist. I need to talk to him. She throws up a salute and laughs low, but worry sparkles behind her eyes. She walks towards the mysterious figure, who turns towards her with narrowed eyes. Keep your distance. I recognize that particular shade of darkness in your eyes. Why do you seek me? You're Jahan, the demonologist. I heard you could help me. Please, I must be free of it. Jahan stands back from her, his body tense. He stares into her eyes a long while, saying nothing. I've heard about you, Losa. You're the amalgam too hideous to contemplate. One who has a demon coiled around her god-woken heart. Its grip grows stronger by the hour. Its voice and yours become ever more indistinguishable until, ultimately, it's your voice no longer. But not just yet. He walks toward her. They talk in low tones. Jahan's face is vivid, insistent. Losa's is set in a determined frown. Do as I say, Losa. 
Hurry now. It won't be long. They shake hands, Jahan clasping Losa's hand in both of his. You'll see. I'll be back before you know it. The Advocate doesn't stand a chance. Losa turns to you. So, we have a job. It's like this. Jahan can help us. He can teach us how to control more Source, just like that. All we need to do is a little favour for him. There's a place to the north called Blood Moon Island. I guess it's been more or less lost to a demonic presence for some time now. There's a fellow there, goes by the Advocate, and our new pal Jahan would like to see him taken care of. We take care of that, and Jahan helps us control more Source. And after that, he may even be able to help exercise what ails me. Sound good? Of course it does. She turns away before you have time to answer. Excuse me. You travel with Losa, do you not? We need to have a word, you and I. I suppose I don't have to tell you her condition is... rather dire. Fast, most certainly being the operative word. The thing inside her is voracious. It's a testament to her strength that it hasn't long since consumed her whole. Perhaps that's because she's Godwoken, just like you are. The fact that she's Godwoken is what's saving her, but may also be the very thing that spells the world's doom. Do heed me when I say that under no circumstance must she be allowed to ascend to divinity. The demon, not she, would be a god. It would bring about the end of time and space and all creation as we know it. I say this to prepare you for the worst. I say this to prepare you for the kill may come to pass. You must be ready to be the death of Lusa. Should she come close to ascension, you may not hesitate. Stand ready to end her, even if it breaks your heart. Then practice the moment in your mind, for hesitation will mean annihilation. There may be more I can do for you. Come find me if you are interested in growing the source inside you. You may find that new strength will soon become essential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, <clears throat> hey. It's a two-parter. First, I'll run a little favour for him, taking out an enemy of his called the Advocate, and he'll help me grow my capacity for source. All the better to fight the demon with, according to him. After that's done, he'll be able to exercise the demon. It's almost too simple to be true. I guess we'll see what kind of fellow this advocate turns out to be. Well, I think I should focus on getting this demon out of my head. And of course, I think you should help me. And if we pick up a few new source tricks along the way, so be it. The tree's spirit embraces its putrid host, an elven ancestor lost to the same demonic disease that infests all of Blood Moon Island. Qui manduc had omnio myrdus ects, it quot potest edse. A moment passes, then you feel it, clarity. You speak my name. You know my torture. Please. Don't judge me for the sickness my roots have spread. I can be free, my soul cleansed. Naivety, stupidity, call it what you want. I wish to put the source within me to good use, and demonology seemed as good a use as any. Silly me. I meant to summon an imp or two, Instead, I ended up hosting a damned archdemon. The roaring in my head, the craving for living flesh, urges, good gods, the urges to kill, to hurt. The stronger they became, the harder I fought. And at some point, I was just gone, deadened, but not dead. And then, awake. 
on an isle I'd never been, encircled by faces I'd never seen, watched by a man I'd never known. They called him Doctor. He shouted strange words, and the demon bellowed. Then, one by one, I... They fell. I watched my own hands slaughter them. I tried to resist, but I couldn't. And then a final roar, when the demon rushed away and into the only one still standing. The doctor. That was my last living memory. The demon may be gone, but its disease still infects my roots, birthing evil into the surrounding soil. While it lives, I am still its rotting servant. I've suffered. The Isle has suffered, but you can end it. You awakened me from nightmare with a single utterance, my name. How amazing that a name can wield so much power. Remember this lesson when you leave Blood Moon Island. The demon blackens another land now. It possesses the very doctor that liberated it. Speak its name, however, and you expose it. You weaken it. You'll know him when you find him. A doctor that accommodates a demon doesn't see patients. Only victims. Destroy it, and you free me to the Hall of Echoes. Destroy it, and my roots taint this isle no longer. Now come closer. I'll say the demon's name only once. The spirit's voice is a harsh whisper. Adra Malik. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> hey. What, this old gaggler weirdos? Oh, she's all right. A lot of bark, but I think she really cares about what we're doing. Better that than a sweetheart who'd sooner watch you walk off a cliff than shout, look out! He's got the thing, you know? Some people see the world as it presents itself. Other people see it as it really is. Jayhan's one of those. Uh... I don't want to brag, but it happens now and then. It's amazing when someone connects to the music, but I've been thinking. You know, I've been a host all my life. I can't imagine what it's like to be anything else. And it's no secret that the beings I've hosted have influenced my music, a lot. I have to wonder if it would all have been different if I were alone in my head. There's got to be some way to keep them quiet. How else can you make anything real? Anything that sounds like you? I make that it's one fine instrument. As soon as I'm able, I'm going to play the hell out of it. Something that's made with love always sounds the sweetest, and you can tell Fingal loves her work. My kind of salty old crank. She certainly seems to want to help us. You don't get many of those in life. I've learned to appreciate them where I find them. I don't know about home, but I do sort of miss the gang I travel with now and then. Crawler, Madcap, Papa Joris for sure. Musicians, mostly. We all had our own stories, our own troubles, but when we were together and the music was with us, it was like none of that mattered at all. When you have people like that around you, you know, a family, even rain feels like sunshine. Yes, finally, progress. It's odd, you know. I can feel that it knows I know. I feel this kind of rage and terror, but I know it's not mine, too. I guess it's sort of like sitting around the dinner table with someone who's in a really bad mood. You can try to enjoy your meal, but your food loses its flavor and your appetite shrivels up, and in the end, all you can feel is what they feel. I mean, the longer it's been, the harder it is to feel anything but what it feels. Everything that's me is just kind of on the surface, right on top of the skin. No meat behind it. And as for the blood and guts and bones and heart, they don't feel like mine. It's taking everything from me, a little more every day. It'll be all right. I'm so close now, so close to getting it gone for good. She smiles. I know its name, after all. Like you said, how about that? How fair is the hunt, my friend? He smiles brightly and pulls you in for a short, if warm, embrace. 
You've done me proud, Godwoken. Prouder than you could ever realize. I know how twisted the paths can get. How much more alluring the sunny glade than the rock-strewn hollows. But you know it's the darkest roads that lead to light. It will be my honor to teach you. The nature of my lesson, though, might be somewhat different from what you expect. I can deepen your bond with the Source, but you must realize that this bond comes at a cost. All life, after all, sustains itself by consumption. Like the grass feeds the herd, and the herd feeds the hunter, so you must feed, for instance, on these. He waves a hand to the cage in demonstration. The very same. For the sum of source that flows through their festering flesh is more than enough to expand the sum that is yours. Through demise, a chance of divinity. Are you ready? Then let us begin. Jahan's incantations befog your mind. All of you is thumping blood, pumping, pumping, pumping. Then, all you hear, then all that is, is screaming. From the cage to you, their blood in your ears, screaming. Silence. That is all. Their sons have set to serve a greater dawn. The world awaits your true awakening. You are very powerful already, a master of the Source. But I did not let this burst of power go to waste. It lies condensed on parchment for you to read and learn. He hands you a book, hot to the touch, a sparkle with Source. My pleasure. And now that the lesson has ended, there is one more matter I would like to discuss. Offer you a chance to deepen our alliance. You see, the demon that you killed, the Advocate, he had a master. You might say the Advocate compared to his master like the pussycat compares to the tiger. It is the tiger I am truly hunting. The self-same tiger, I suspect, that has been haunting Losa. Now, don't you worry. I have no intention of sending you after this archdemon. There are few enough Godwoken as it stands for me to force them into any real danger. The one thing I would like you to do for me, though, is to return through the mist to the Isle of Blood, and uncover there his name. Jahan looks at you utterly flabbergasted, but soon an air of serenity descends upon him, that of a chess player overlooking the board. A drama leak. You have to admire his cunning. To think that in his guise of Deva, he and I shared the finest wines in the realm. Stories of the women we have loved. Thank you, Godwoken. You have done me an unparalleled service, and you've quite humbled me at the same time. You must go your path, I mine, so that I may confront the Archdemon in his lair, in the great city of Arx. Please accept this token of gratitude, and fare thee well. Are you ready, Losa? Right. Really? Okay, yes. What? I'm ready. Totally. Is it just me, or did it just get really sweaty in here? I won't lie. This will be rough, Losa. Our foe is a true archdemon. We know him now. A drama leak. There is a great power in names. 
Just like Source is the language of creation, a demon's true name is the core of its existence. It's be-all or end-all. With his name, we may undo him. That will be our attempt. As for you... His dark eyes flash at you. You must not disturb us, no matter what. Promise me. He nods respectfully in return, then focuses on Losa once more. Close your eyes, Losa. Do as I do. Jahan takes Losa's hands and begins inhaling slowly, deeply, then exhaling audibly through his mouth. Losa's breaths match his. They begin to hum in unison, a low, rumbling note held over several out-breaths. The humming grows louder and louder until... Quiet! Adramalik! Losa suddenly lunges forward, her hands reaching for Jahan's throat. Jahan steps away, and Losa tumbles to the ground before quickly scrambling to her feet. Losa's eyes are ink black, her skin corpse grey, her chest heaves in rapid pulses as she stares intently at Jahan. Adramalik! Thousand named nemesis! Lord of Soot! Come, shake black hands with me! Leave her! Leave her! Come play with me! This is none of your business, Jehan. How many times do I have to convince you to keep your nose out of my affairs? Listen to me, demon. I know why you chose her. I know what it is you fear the most and therefore desire the most. But I'll not let her serve you any longer. Losa's a good host, Jehan. We're going places. It's no concern of yours. Mashtunapathan Shdanilu, Kaumel Saravel, Damarel Saravel. He places a palm on Losa's forehead. She falls to her knees, seemingly overcome by some unseen force. You petulant would be king. You're nothing. She is mine. She is mine. Kaumel Saravel, Damarel Saravel. Mashtu, Shdanelu. Losa's eyes roll back in her head. She groans, her face slack and lifeless, while her body racks with spasms. Jahan draws his palm back from her. She is rigid on the floor. It's no use. It's too late. I... I failed her. The demon's not coiled around her heart. He's become her heart. Try as I might, he would not shift. Losa's soul is buried very deeply, deeper than ever before. Adramalik may never allow her to resurface again. She's lost, bewildered, a stranger in her own soul, desperately trying to find her way home. She's fighting a battle for her life, for her very self. It's a battle she may yet win, even if only temporarily. But she'll need your help. You must call her spirit back from the dark. Guide her into the light. Let your voice be the shepherd that leads the lamb through the valley of wolves. Go on. Call to her! She stirs, barely. Hmm? Her eyes flutter open and dart around in a panic. They come to a focus on you. Hey, Chief. Well done. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Only just. I am truly sorry, Losa that I couldn't exorcise the demon, but do not despair. I will not give up on you. We must simply take a darker path still. Confront Adramalik in his lair and deal with the demon face to face. 
You almost have to admire his cunning. To think that in his guise of Deva, he and I shared the finest wines in the realm, stories of life and love. But now I know where he hides, afraid of his own name. To the city of Arx you must go. I will travel with you, if I may. I will meet you both there and prepare for the coming battle. You'll yet be all, Losa. Hey. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not all right. That wasn't okay. It was... It was like dying. I was all alone in the dark, in the deep, deep dark. And I suddenly knew as clear as day that I didn't exist, that no one would ever know me, and then... <laughs> and then I heard your voice. I heard you calling, and... and I followed it. it. It was all I had in the darkness. It was the only thing I could find. Just you. Nothing else. What the hell do I do with... that? Tears stream down her cheeks. She steps forward and wraps her arms around you. I'm not even a real person, you know. I've got this thing in me, and my chance of getting better is getting smaller all the time. She holds on to you for a long moment before stepping away, wiping her face. Eventually, she smiles. I'm damn lucky I met you, Chief. A sudden shuffle behind you, and Losa's mouth is close to your ear. Hey, Chief. I need to have a little chat with old Mouse about something. Mind if I butt in? There you are, Losa. I've been eager to hear a little update. Did you do as I instructed? Yeah, about that. Oh, do tell. This sounds interesting. That's one word for it, I guess. I met Jahan, and he tried the exorcism, but it didn't work. The demon's still knocking around in there, in here. Hmm. Well, leave it to me, Losa. Mama Malady will think of something. You will? Of course I will. Surely you know by now you're my favorite. Really? I didn't think you liked anyone. I didn't say I liked you. I said you're my favorite. The cherry pit at the top of the rubbish heap, if you will. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. It's the nicest thing I've ever said. Before we go any further, there's something I want to ask you. <clears throat> okay, so... Did you hear the one about the pregnant lich? She forgot her prophylactory. You're very generous, thank you. I just want to lighten the mood, the smallest of scooches. I mean, we're at the Nameless Isle. One of us is about to ascend to divinity, and we still don't know exactly who. I guess things are about to get, uh, interesting. Same to you, Chief. Same to you. And when push comes to shove, I'll try not to shove too hard. Losa looks pale and unfocused. She doesn't meet your eyes. <sighs> yes! Oh, no! So, I guess this is it. I can't see two ways about it. I need to be myself again. Finally. I can't risk getting shut out by this demon. It wants to keep me quiet. To rule in place of me. I... I need to make sure I'm strong enough that it can never seize control again. I won't let it make me silent in my own skin. I need to ascend. I know I can trust you. I know that better than anything else in the world. Truth is, I think you'd make a spectacular divine. And I know you'll get this bloody demon out of me as soon as you can. She takes your hand, holds it to her lips, and kisses your fingertips. She cradles her face in your palm for a moment, eyes closed, before letting your hand go. Let's do this. Losa is pale and damp with sweat, but something has changed in her eyes. She seems more like herself. We're... we're getting close, Chief. 
For choosing the next divine, you mean? Yeah, I'm ready. I hope you are too. I think... She stops short, her eyes flashing back, then normal, then black again. She turns away, covering her face. We shouldn't talk about this now. I'll be fine. I just need to concentrate. After all that's just happened, life, every flawed morsel of it, seems more precious to you than ever. You look around at those who have accompanied you so far. In each one, something unique shines through. Divinity has eluded you so far, but humanity, humanity beats strong within you, here and now. Who knows what lies ahead for you, for your companions? Your quest failed. The void is growing stronger and the hall is dark. You feel the need for some affection. Perhaps they feel it too. Alone? Together? You and me? I love that. Lead the way, Chief. As you move to go below decks, the live wood creaks and groans. The steps you thought you knew lead you to a part of the ship you've never seen before. A newly carved nook that smells of resin and wood chips. Touching the wall beneath your fingers, the live wood hums at your touch. You understand that the Lady Vengeance has carved this space for you in gratitude for your help. You enter and feel the presence of the ship recede offering you the total privacy of a moment alone with your companion. The first moment you have been truly alone together. And would you get a load of this place? She saunters around the room, inspecting it like she plans to move in. She tosses her head over her shoulder and calls out to you in an affected tone. I suppose it will do, darling. Her face cracks into a smile, then a laugh. <laughs> so, what should we do? Wait, don't answer that. She digs into her pack, skipping over to you, and sits on the ground at your feet, then tugs your hand for you to sit on the ground too. She sets an empty bottle on the ground between you and looks at you impishly. Let's play a game. Don't worry, it's easy. It's called Spout's Choice. We each take a turn spinning this here bottle, and whoever the spout points to, well, I'll explain that part when we get there. You can go first. She takes your hand and places it on the bottle, on its side between you. Go on, spin. The bottle swishes in circles as it spins. Losa watches it intently as it lands, pointing directly at her. She smiles and blushes. Well, in this game, you're meant to plant one on whoever the bottle lands on. She flutters her eyelashes in exaggerated coquettishness, her blush deepening. She kisses you back, gently, more gently than you expected, then leans away, flushed with colour. My. <clears throat> My turn. She spins the bottle, and it twirls and twirls, and comes to a rest, pointing into a no-man's land to the left of your knee. She doesn't lift her eyes from the bottle, but quickly corrects it to face you. She looks up then, drawing an arc with her eyes from the bottle's tip to your gaze. Her dark eyes are deeper, lusher than ever before. Hey, Chief. She crawls across the space between you and climbs into your lap, wrapping her legs around you. She melts into you and nuzzles her face into the crook of your neck. Her body is warm, warmer than it should be, her weight comforting and solid against you. She speaks into your neck, her lips brushing against your skin. Chief, look, I don't know what's going to happen from here on out. I don't know if we'll find Dallas. I don't know which one of us is going to, you know, all the stuff they say we'll do. I don't even know if I'm still going to be myself much longer. But I do know that I'm happier now than I've ever been in my life. You make me feel like, like I have a voice. Like, I'm not just a host. Like, I'm a real person. I need to tell you something. The thing is, I... Well, you know, when two people get to know each other pretty well... It's just, I... I... I love you. Suddenly, you feel the thud, thud, thud of her heart hammering against her chest and into yours. I love you too. I love you too. I love you too. 
One tear streams out of the corner of her eye as she breaks into a fit of laughter and throws herself forward, knocking you to the ground, her whole body wrapped around yours. Oh, I've wanted you for so long. I've wanted you like this for so long. She grins and takes your chin softly in her hand, parting your lips. She comes close to your mouth, so close, then licks your lips once, twice and kisses you softly, soft as your first time, then harder, deeper, her tongue swirling around yours. She tugs at your clothes and growls in your ear. Get these off. She nips and kisses newly exposed flesh all over your body, running her mouth from your neck to your belly button, down to your shins, up to your thighs. Oh, that is one beautiful man. She sits up on her knees, still straddling your hips, and shimmies out of every last article of clothing. Her body is smooth and soft, flesh dipping generously beneath your hands. You could take handful after handful of her and never have enough. Here I am, all of me, and I want all of you. She moves her body slowly, slowly, slowly over yours, until you are one person, the surprise of it, the perfection of it making you both gasp. She moves in small circles, your bodies joined like they were made for each other, like they were never meant to be apart. Oh, you're perfect. You're perfect. She covers your hands with hers, guides them to places that make her exhale sharply, her eyelids fluttering. She keeps a gentle pace, then begins moving faster, harder, sweat glistening on her collarbone. Like this? She keeps the pace, her eyes locked with yours, a half-drugged smile on her lips. This is it. This is my cure. You're my cure. You are one in the night, one great beautiful being, your bodies aching with desire where they touch, your mind ablaze, your souls entwined, growing great, greater, greater, greater. How could I have gone this long without you? In this infinite moment, it feels you'll never be apart again. Losa yawns and stretches, arching her whole body like a cat. She folds into you, her head on your chest, arm draped around your body. I'm gonna love you for the rest of my life, you know. However long that is. Even if I have morning breath. Even if a demon eats my whole brain. Even if I hug all the blankets in the night and I'm not even sorry. She holds you tighter and kisses your chest, where your heart is. So, I guess we should get back out there. Save the realm, stop the void, blah blah blah. She reaches up and holds your cheek, head cocked. Unfortunately, I think we do. She plants a quick kiss on your lips and a bite on your neck. Let's get out of here, Chief. Hey, Chief. You ready to get out of here? Hey, now. Let's keep it professional and everything. We're still godwoken on a mission, aren't we? Though, after experiencing that thing you did with your tongue, <laughs> I guess I know who the real god among mortals is. Malady said something about the ship's figurehead, didn't she? Hey, Chief, before we get a move on, I'd like a word with Malady. You mind? Psst. Hey, Mal's. I'm not, you know, feeling so hot. I should think not. The demon is getting closer to... himself. You'll meet him in Ark soon enough, and if you meet him like this, it's bye-bye Losa. Um... We won't let that happen, will we? I've got a little something cooking. There's power in names, after all. And we know exactly who a drama leak is. Don't worry. I'll find you before it's too late. Demon's honor. Don't worry, Chief. I'm on high alert. Well, I'm still quite keen on getting this parasite out of my head. First that, then Dallas. She says nothing for a moment, but chews her lip, deep in thought. To be honest, so did I. When we first arrived on the island, I could barely keep a lid on it. But when we fought the gods, it suddenly grew quiet. I think it's waiting, biding its time. For what, I'm not totally sure, but it's eager. 
I wish I didn't have to say that. Oh? Well, I'm still here, aren't I? That's just about the highest compliment I can pay. I may not agree with you on most things, but I think we make a decent team. Your turn. What's your honest opinion of me? Well, now, then all my painstaking efforts haven't been in vain. Thanks, Chief. Now, was that all? Hmm, I remember. What about it? I think you know what it meant to me. Look, I... I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if both or neither of us are gonna make it out of all this as mortals or gods, or whether we'll even live to tell the tale. All I know is... you. When I look at you, I feel like everything is gonna be okay. I feel like I'm where I'm meant to be. I'm not asking for anything you can't give. In fact, I'm not asking for anything at all. I just want to see where this road leads us. And I also want to take another trip on your maypole. Is that so wrong? There you are. I've been looking for Lothar. I suppose she can sense how close she is to him. Luckily for all of us, I've been busy. I know exactly what we need to do to get him out of Losa's head and into the palm of her hand. Shall I continue? Well, the prognosis is very good. I know of a way we can find your demon's home plane, the place he stores the souls he steals. If we can find it, we can destroy it. Losa inhales sharply. I'll read that as excitement, gratitude, battle lust. It's just, this is it. This is everything I've wanted. Finally, a chance to, to have a chance. That's the idea, at least. But we need to move quickly. The faster we can get in and out of there, the less chance there will be that a drama leak realizes we're there. So, are you ready? Yes. Yes, definitely. I think. So, team, ready to roll? Malady takes Losa's hands and closes her eyes. Stay near me, all of you. You don't want to get lost where we are going. You are suddenly heavy on your feet. The air here feels weighted with import and dread. All light within you feels suddenly dimmer. Here we are. Tread carefully, Losa. This place... it isn't safe. Losa looks at you nervously and smiles. I'm glad you're here. So, where should we start? That depends on what we find. We need to weaken your demon by freeing the souls he's trapped here. Exactly how he's storing them, and what that will mean for us, will be a surprise for both of us. I believe so. But we won't let that happen. You can say that again. The powerful ones do. Nothing they enjoy more than a private playground where no prying eyes can interfere with their... fun. And before you ask, no, I don't have one. Even I have a modicum of decency. Deep, deep down. You can, but that would close the portal for good. It isn't nothing for me to bring us here. It takes a great sacrifice. Don't waste it. No wax pools at the candle's wick, though it grows brighter as you inspect it. A feeling comes over you. There's a soul within this flame, within the black wax that fuels it. Do you feel it, Losa? There's a soul within this candle. So, this is how your demon operates. He collects them here and feeds from them at his leisure. I feel it. It's the spirit of a woman. Prudence. The innkeeper in Driftwood. She made a deal with him, with her drama leak, and now she'll be trapped here forever. If the demon is feeding from her, we need to snuff the candle out. This is how we'll weaken him. Snuff her out? But that's like, like killing her. If I do that, I'm no better than a drama leak. Oh, please. He destroys people for the love of it. If we must do this, it's to save the thousands he'd feed on in future. That isn't true. I don't care about them. I mean, I do. But the only person I really care about is me. She reaches out and pinches the wick, snuffing out the fire. There. 
It's done. Let's... let's keep moving. Good idea. The candles glow with the light of the spirits housed by each. They reach toward Losa, eager to be heard. You know what you must do, Losa. There is no other way. Two people. Two souls. Two souls just like me. You're right. I owe them that. I owe them at least that. She holds her hand to the flame and seems to go into a trance. Two souls. So different. Two souls bound together by the demon. One, a humble man, a father. The other, a, a killer. The first, he understands. He wants me to destroy Edramalik. He's willing to, to be destroyed himself. The second is full of anger, of fury. He doesn't want to be sent into the darkness. I have no choice. If I want to survive him, I, I have to be like him. I have to do this. It's the only way. Losa reaches out and twists the candle's wicks. They smoke and die. You're getting the hang of this. Very good. I... I wasn't expecting... this. The candles twinkle in the distance, each a life, each a soul. All these people, all these people, all these precious people. She stands silent, stock still. Malady suddenly grabs Losa's arm. She speaks through gritted teeth. We must stop him. This cannot continue, we can't let it. We need to free them, snuff them out. If a drama leak can't draw on their power, we'll be able to face him and finish him. I... I... But they're all like me. Every last one of them. How can I... How can I... Just say the word, Losa, and I'll summon a flood large enough to end this. All of this, once and for all. Losa looks out over the sea of candles for a long while, saying nothing. It's so quiet here. I don't feel him at all. Here we are, before the evidence of all his disgusting deeds, and my mind is clearer than it's been in a long time. It's funny, isn't it? How some pain is so big it just burns you clean from the inside out. It's almost like I could just step off the edge of this ledge and float away. There's nothing to me anymore. Nothing at all. The light from the candles dances in her dark eyes as she looks at you. Do I? She takes your hand and looks out over the sea of souls once more. She leans against you, letting you support the smallest bit of her weight. Sometimes I think my fate was written from the beginning. I was never going to manage it. When someone that powerful wants something from you, they just take it. That's what they do. Only an idiot pretends they won't. She stiffens and stands upright, running her fingers through her hair. She smiles. Smirks, really. I guess that makes me an idiot. Malady, let's do it. With pleasure. Ah, perfect. All right, all right, that should do it. We need... We need to leave, quickly. She pants and wipes her mouth. Blood smears across her sleeve. Losa is still and quiet, her eyes flashing grey, then black, then draining back to normal. A drama leak. He must be furious. We need to get her out of here. Now. Hurry. Having extinguished the flames in the demon's home plane and killed innocents in the process, Losa looks to her party, eyebrows raised. You sacrificed many to save many more yourself included among them. It was the right thing to do. I had no choice. If I had left those souls alive, I, I stand no chance of defeating a drama leak. This is the only way forward. That was an odd wee interlude. One better forgotten. Onward. That was, that was amazing. He's scared. I feel it. Oh my gods, I feel it. This is it. Freedom. 
can hardly remember what it tastes like. Time to find out, I guess. Let's get him, Chief. There you have it, Losa. Do you feel it? How weak he's become. It's amazing. My heart feels more like my own than it has in... Uh, in too long now. I can almost start hoping I stand a fighting chance. You still need to face him. You still need to best him. But you can do it. Especially with allies like this at your side. Of that, I have no doubt. None. I... I need to rest. You can do this. You are ready. You can finish this, now and forever. I couldn't have done any of it without you, Mals. Losa wraps Malady in a huge hug. Malady grimaces and pats her back stiffly. Don't worry, Chief. I'm on high alert. <laughs> Which part? Who could look at all those people and destroy them without a second thought? Apart from Malady, of course. I know I crossed a line. But it wasn't a line between good and bad. It was a line between knowing and not knowing. I would have preferred not to know. How dark the night can get. How close you can stand at the edge of oblivion and feel... nothing. But I did what I had to do. And I'd do it again. As for the rest of the realm's demons, well, what is it they say? The first cut slice is the deepest. Once this one scabs over, I'll be ready to hunt out the rest of them, wherever they're hiding. We make a good team, don't we, Chief? A really good team. May as well get to it, then. Ah, how good of you to come. And you've brought my favorite person in the entire world. How are you, Losa, dear? It's odd seeing you here among my things, my practice. Usually it's me who visits you. He stumbles and coughs, then regains his composure. His eyes narrow malevolently. I understand you've been very, very, very busy. You're welcome in my home in this plane, Losa but I don't remember inviting you to my little hideaway among the stars. Who do you think you are? I have to say, a drama leak, you don't look too good. He winces and recoils, then quickly regains his composure. Come, Losa. After all we've been through, you must know better than to test me like this. Maybe once, before I cut you off from your precious candles. Did it hurt when I snuffed them out? Did you feel the loss of each one as their power fell away from you? How does it feel, Adromalik, to be as small and powerless as you make the rest of us feel? Shut up! Shut up! Such disrespect. I'd be a bit friendlier if I were you. But then again... I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? I'm still going to destroy you. Stay away from me. Stay where you are. You should have stayed away from me. Losa puts a hand to her weapon. She glows with cold fire. Her radiance fills the room. She looks to you. Ready, Chief? I have given you everything. The powers of the gods. Freedom from their relentless demands. Everything I had, I laid at your feet. And you react to me with this... This anger. This hatred. It defies logic. It defies explanation. There's nothing left I can do for you, Losa. Nothing but feel sorry for you. And that I certainly do. But make no mistake... This changes nothing. You are mine. Mine and mine alone. I don't need your consent. I only need your soul. An odd-looking young woman, a woman you now know better than almost anyone, is staring intently before you. Fingers curled rigidly at her sides. Greyish-black veins run from her eyes down her cheeks, then suddenly clear. She blinks. Her bright blue eyes, bluer than you've ever seen them, shine with life. Hey, 
Hey, it's over. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I've never felt better. Look, look. I mean, listen. She goes silent, listening. You know, I think maybe I was wrong before. That I could just, just get rid of him. I can still hear something deep down. Like an echo, really. An echo of a whisper. And if I choose to listen... She pauses, one ear cocked, and frowns. It gets louder. And if I choose not to listen... She cocks her head the other way, brow furrowed, then breaks into a huge smile. I can't really hear it at all. I guess that's a new kind of freedom. Maybe not the freedom to be alone, but the freedom to choose which company to keep. She smiles and steps forward, her heat like a warm breeze, her smell like earth and leaves, and leans in to whisper in your ear. I choose me. And I choose you. I choose us. She leans back, her face shining, eyes dancing, radiating freedom, love, joy itself. So, now that my voice is mine again, want to hear a song? I love that song, you know, but I'm not even sure who wrote it. Maybe it was me, maybe it was one of the voices, maybe a bit of both. She smiles slyly, hums a little melody, nothing you've heard before. <sighs> I guess it's time to start on some new material. Now, onward. She stops short, mid-stride. Her eyes go wide. It's... It's not... I see them all. Thousands of them. Thousands of planes. Thousands of demons. 
Millions of souls, lost souls. So many trapped, so many doomed. Like I was, like I was. She shakes her head, eyes squeezed shut. Someone needs to help them. Someone like us, someone like me. Yes. She flings her hands into the air, closes her eyes and laughs. I feel real. She twirls in place, then stands straight, arms at her sides, still smiling. I feel like I can take on the world. As for Dallas, bring it on. This is it. I can hardly believe it. She casts her gaze around the crypt in awe. After everything we've been through, after everything we've seen, here we are, here I am. And now that I see godhood before me, I know what I have to do. Chief, you need to ascend. There's no one I would trust with this responsibility but you. I know you'll do what needs to be done, what ought to be done. And I know you'll do it with style. Her eyes flash and sparkle with tears. She quickly wipes them away and feigns kicking you down a road. Back at you, Chief. Always. Now go on, shoo. You've got business to attend to. Hey there, Chief. So, a world full of sorcerers. What do you make of it? I suppose that's a death sentence for Fort Joy. What a terrible shame. Though I guess it wasn't all bad. I met you after all. And look at everything we've done. Get loot, play loot, get loot, get glad. So, Chief, I guess this is it, right? Well, I mean, you can always come with me. I mean, I'm just saying, it's an option. If you want. Maybe? I still love you. As she turns from you, the whites of her eyes darken, the veins in her face go grey, and a wicked smile curls her mouth. Suddenly it's gone again. She winks, and you're left wondering whether you saw anything at all. See you around. <laughs>